Starting a design project can be super overwhelming. So I'm gonna take you through one of the crucial steps that I do at the start of every project that helps set me up for success. Let's jump in. Let's say we have been asked to design an app that lets you search and book flights. Now this could be endless possibilities. So what I like to do at the start of the project is a step that's called benchmarking. Now all that benchmarking means is I'm going to plan what to measure and who to compare against, and then analyze what I find to find gaps and best practices to follow. Enough talk, let's see how we actually do this. The way I like to benchmark is using a website called Mobbin. Mobbin is an amazing repository of over 500,000 screenshots from different apps and websites around the world. It's also really global, which helps us get to know apps and websites that we've never heard of before because maybe they don't even exist in the country that we live in. I think it has over 1,200 apps on it, which is just an insane number to me. Now, in our case, we're looking for a certain book, right? So what we can do, you can see that here, there's some flows popping out, uh, some UI elements, screens and categories. I could go into travel and transportation and see what happens there, but I worry it might not just be flights. And yeah, I can see I've got some, some apps I've never even heard of, but like taxi apps, e-bikes, stuff like that. And that's not exactly what we're looking for. So what I will do, I'll remove this category filter. And what I'll do is I'll just search for booking a flight, okay? And you can see that you can search by um, specific text on a screenshot as well, which is really, really cool. So it, it all of the screenshots that it takes also takes out the text. So um, if you want like a specific word or something like that. So you can see now that it's just bringing up screenshots from different apps. Um, so I've got American Airlines, Flighty, Scoot, don't know what that is. Um, grab Singapore Airlines. So we can see a few of them are from actual airline apps and a few are more like searching and booking. So this is great for me. Now, all I need to do now is essentially just click on them like this, and then I'm going to copy them directly into Figma. So let's grab a few that seem like they're what I'm looking for. Got these ones, Maybe this guy. I want ones that are already filled with information rather than the empty ones. Nice. So now I have, and you can see here it says 10 selected. With benchmarking, I would recommend no more than 10. It can get really overwhelming and really easy, especially with tools like this, to just grab loads and loads and loads of data. And it can actually be a hindrance if you start looking at way too many apps. It's also good practice to ask, if you are working for a client, to ask them if they have any apps that they are their direct competitors or ones that they want to look like or they want to not look like as well so you can know to bring those into your benchmarking because it could be really crucial now the next step is i can either um download these as images but because we're using figma mobbin thankfully have a plugin that helps you copy everything into figma without having to download the images so all i'll do is i'll click on the copy here then i'll go into figma and look for the mobbin plugin as you can see here there we go and then all it does, it's a bit strange, but it actually works well. So I've copied it over from the website. Now inside of this section, I'm just gonna command V and it pastes those in. Um, the first time you do this, it will ask you to log into your Figma on the website. So it makes sure that you're using the same account and it knows where to paste it into, but that's kind of perfect. So there we go. We now have all of these in and it's really handy because it makes the name the name of the app as well. So you can keep track of that. And then also you have the it kind of here at the bottom to help you keep track. of it. At this point, I'd also like to say thank you to Mobbin for sponsoring this video. I use Mobbin all the time at work. As you know, I'm a mobile designer by day and this is actually something that I use daily. So I was really excited when they reached out because I truly back this product. They've also generously given me a link to give all of you 20% off when you subscribe through the link in my description. So go check it out. Now that I have these, what I'll do is I like to set them to be the same size. Ooh, not like that. So make sure that you've selected the lock aspect ratio here at the side to make sure that it scales correctly. And then using my tidy up tool, I'll just neaten them up like this. And then they're all next to each other, which is great. So they're all from different apps and I can already see some clear patterns emerging Emerging, which is why we wanted this, right? This is gonna help us set our requirements and explain to us what we actually need to build and how it should look. See, they all kind of expect the same inputs-ish. We are noticing some slight differences. And what's also great about using something like this for your benchmarking is that this is real life examples. If we had used something like images from Behance or Dribbble, they are beautiful and trendy and, and 
and really nice to look at, but functional they are not. So I would really recommend sticking to real data when you're doing your benchmarking. It will help you in the long run and help you not to overpromise to your client. To start our actual benchmarking, let's look a bit more in depth at the screenshots that we actually brought in. I did replace one because I noticed it wasn't exactly what, what we were even looking for. And um, so I brought in this hopper one. But we can see that all of them sort of lay out the page in a really basic and simple way. And that's something that I always preach about like boring design being better than the flashy design, because this is so simple, right? It's just input fields. Most of them are white on uh, uh, black on top of white or on top of gray. There's not much going on. Everything is kind of contained within a specific space and it takes you through the journey. And that's something that we need to, to remember in app design in general. We wanna make sure that it's step by step and there's no scrolling needed. You'll also notice that in all of them, all of the main selections happen above the fold, if you will. So they happen within your viewport. You don't need to scroll down to make any further selections. And this one, even because it's a multi-city screenshot that I accidentally brought in, you've got like flight one and flight two, and they're all still within the same viewing port. Now, before I get into how I do my benchmarking, just to show you, if we did take some nice fancy screenshots from the hand slash dribble, this is what we would have gotten. And I'm just gonna take 60 seconds out of your day to just go through these and show you some issues. So, and why I would not recommend doing this. So I'm just gonna shift and P to get my pencil tool. Um, and then let's say this one, for example. First of all, why is the copy so different? City or airport? slash where are you going? That's a bit weird. Then stay flight restaurant. I do not think these would be in the same category of selection. Then if we look at something like this here, so we've got an icon and a from to, which is good. We've got dates, but then there's this return toggle, but there's also this round trip. So which one do I use? Also this says passenger, but then here it's a date. So in this one, this is the search page. This is actually good. I've got space for both. I do have departure. Where's the return date? Am I going and never coming back? And there's no selector to say if it's one way or return as well, so that's weird. Also, why is there an avatar? Enough with the avatars. Someone using an airline app would never add in their picture into there. That's just weird. You can have a profile, but you will never have a picture. This is one of those classic things that I see in designs all the time that gets over promised to a client and they get so excited by it, but then you're gonna have to build it and someone's gonna have to build that database and store all of these people's images and no one's gonna use it. Stop with the avatars. What page is this? So is this the page where you actually input the things you're searching for or is this after you've searched? Because where do I change the dates? Also, if it's a really long city name or a really long airport name, this date is gonna crash. That might've been a bit longer than 60 seconds, but I hope you had fun like I did, cause I liked it. <laughs> so yeah, this this is why, again, just to just to reiterate the point, and I know I'm, I'm saying this a lot, but real content wins every single time over just fancy and nice UI, and it will protect you as a designer from over-promising and not being able to deliver, which is the main point. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of how I actually do benchmarking. What I do is I just go in with some boxes and highlight sections that are the same. So I'm noticing that the first thing I have in most of them is a section like this, and I'll make it, let's say blue, and I'll make it, 20%, maybe even 10%. So if I just click on a number while I'm selecting it, it will change the opacity. So I clicked on one and it changed the appearance to 10. So I've got this section here and it's blue. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this to every single frame where I see it. So here I can see that I select it there. This is where I select it on this one. This is where I select it on this one. And I would say, you don't have to be super accurate, but I would change the sizing of it to match. So a bit bigger, a bit smaller. Here it's over here and it's not full width. This guy is over here. And for example, with the width, so here it is just a small drop down. I'm not sure what advanced means, but this one it is just a small drop down. So I'll, I'll do that one. Now I'll continue doing that for the other sections. Then you'll understand why in a minute. So let's say the next section down here is going from and to. So holding down option and shift and dragging to just to duplicate this. And then I'll make this say green. And then again, duplicating it to all of them. Uh, 
I've gone ahead and replaced this one with the round trip one rather than the multi city because it was acting slightly differently. But already we can start to see a pattern. By doing this sort of color blocking, we can already see that in all of these, you've got blue first, green second. Yeah, and, and quite tight after each other as well. I'm gonna continue and do this for the other sections, which are adding in the dates and then selecting how many passengers and maybe also for selecting cabin. And then after I do that, we can see how we're gonna compare them to, to help ourselves. So I finished doing all of that and you can see that this takes a second, but it actually really helps and it makes you really look at each of your screenshots and like analyze them. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my screenshots and then I'm going to command shift and L to lock the layer. You can also just go into the layers panel and lock them from here if you wish. Then what I'll do is I'll just drag to select everything and because the layer beneath is locked, so I'm only selecting those color blocks and I will duplicate them so don't drag them up because you want to keep them on the page as well but what i will do is i will uh, hold down option and shift to just drag them and duplicate them up so i've removed the flighty one because i realized that it wasn't a screenshot from actual the from the actual flighty app it was actually a web page on WestJet that you got to through the flighty app so we just have these for now but but that's also fine and we can really see this pattern emerge with, with the colors you can see that the blues are kind of starting at the top then we've got the greens then the yellows then most of them all of them have a red not all of them have a pink and pink and red sort of share the same hierarchy in some of them and some of them there are underneath so this is already so interesting for us to see and also this is visual when you are presenting things like these to clients and you want to explain to them like why you made a specific choice showing it in this way it's so visual and it's not just written down on, on a page that they can see it themselves they're also like oh yeah i see it so this will help us to establish what we need to design ourselves so let's do a quick ux wireframe that follows this sort of pattern. So what I'll do, I'll click on F and get an, then let's get an iPhone 16 Pro. It's just gonna come here. Then I'll go into my assets panel and I'll just bring in some of the, you know, navigation that we have in the kit. So with the iOS 26 kit, what I find easiest is actually to bring in an example and then just steal stuff from there. So let's say, yeah, let's just grab this page for example. I'll just attach it and then I'll grab these two, paste them in, and then I don't need both of these buttons. So let's just remove them. I'll change the text. Sun Sunshine flights. I have an airline now. And then I'm gonna want to start some basic UXing. So we see that the top is the blue section, and we know that it needs to be some sort of selector between round trip, one way and multi-city. There are slight differences within the benchmarks of if we start with round trip or if we even call it return or round trip and then go to one way and then multi-city. I think in most of them, multi-city is the last one. I guess it is the odd one out, but it's one way leading or it's round trip leading because this is just UX and this is really like early, early days. It doesn't matter that much. So what I'll do is I'll click on T to get text tool, round trip, and I'll make this one because we have the kit enabled. So we've got all of the built-in styles from Apple, which is grand. So I'll make this one round trip. Then I'm holding down option shift to um, duplicate one way and multi city can't spell today there we go um then i'll just chuck these in an auto layout to make things easier for me so i've selected all of them and shift and a then i'll drag that out give them 16 pixels of padding either side and then probably i want like 10 spacing between them then i'll click on enter to select all of the text boxes set them to center align 
and fill container. So that means that you can see here, they're gonna take up as much space as they can while leaving 10 pixels of gap between each other. So that's good for me. I'll probably have like, I clicked on L and adding in a line underneath here, holding down shift while I do that to make sure that it's a straight line. Something like that, just to show that we're selecting round trip. And then we're getting into these sections. Now, because it's UX, I don't need to worry too much about what what is actually the design. But what I do know and what I see here is that most of them are using the full space for the departure and the arrival. And the reason for that is because these are long names. See, London, England, United Kingdom, and in brackets, I assume it says LHR here. And a lot of times the airport names are super long. And this is why, again, using real examples really helps because we can see names of different airlines at different airports. So Singapore, Changi Airport, for example, probably pronounced that wrong. San Francisco, SFO, San Francisco International. Yeah, Berlin, Brandenburg Airport. They are long names. JFK, John F. Kennedy International Airport. That's a long name. Yeah, so we need a lot of space for this. So this, sorry, Singapore Airlines, but I don't agree with this. Yeah, because I know this is the big thing and then it just says underneath the name of the city. It doesn't seem to say the name of the airport, but what if it's a really long name? Again, we need to be prepared for anything. So what I'll do, I'll click on T, add in a text. I'll say um, departure, that, and then shift and A to put it in an auto layout. I'll give it probably like a grayish background. Maybe that one. Um, and then I'll just bring it here and give it a bit of space just to show that that's where we'll have this. Holding down option and dragging to create another one. The departure arrival. So that's not how you spell arrival. There we go. Then with the dates, again, we don't want to get too much into UI here, but I am noticing that most of them separate them out. Um, into two different sections. So most of them will have departure and uh, return dates separately. Mm, I know that this one just has it, oh, this is a one way, okay. This one has it as a date range, which is also an option. Because they're always on the same line, and I kind of agree with that, I wouldn't put them one underneath the other either way. So I'm just gonna keep it there. Uh, I will change this to departure uh, airport add the word airport after uh, and I'll put departure and arrival dates thank god spell check and then after that we do have the red section which is the how many passengers so I'll put that here and then the last thing we have is, do we want to include our pink section? We have it in one, two, three, four, five examples out of our eight. I would include it at this stage, to be fair. I think most people would probably keep it on economy, but for some people, it probably is really necessary. And then at all of them, we have our CTA at the bottom. So we'll just bring that in and say CTA and I'll put that in the middle. So CTA means call to action. Um, and the reason I'm not writing search here is because maybe it's not search, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's search flights. So I don't wanna stick to copy too much to um, so keep it vague for your UX wireframes, especially at this kind of like really high level ones. So, you, so now using all of those benchmarks, we were able to create this UX wireframe really quickly and easily and we have confidence that what we're doing matches what you see in the market, which is really important because we never want to reinvent the wheel. People are used to using specific mental models and are used to seeing content in a specific way. If we try and reinvent it, most likely what's gonna happen is no one's gonna wanna use our product. So stick to what you know and use real content and don't put avatars where they don't need to be. That's the main thing really I need you to know. <laughs> And that's that. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Let me know what other kind of videos you want to see. See you at the next one.